Hi guys, I'm Slasher, and this is Road to Top 200. I will be looking at a recent Spectre game of mine, and will try to explain the thoughts behind my decisions. My skill and item choices will be based off my Slasher's Way Spectre Guide. So first of all, it is very important to analyze the draft before the creep spawn. In terms of carry potential and late game, the matchup is very equal. We have Spectre and Storm as strong late gamers, and three supports who are strong early and mid game. They have Sniper and Juggernaut, and also three supports. Looking at the laning, we are doing a safe tri lane with no jungler, while they are doing a dual lane with Juggernaut jungling. This means that they have a greedier lineup, and if we play too passive, they will most likely outfarm us. We have to at least kill Tusk in our safe tri lane, or the supports need to smoke and kill Pudge mid. I start off buying 4 Tangus, 1 self and a stout shield. Since I am in a tri lane and don't expect a lot of harass, I don't buy any more regen. This should last me until I am level 6 and get an urn. If I expect more harass, for example against a dual range lane, I will buy 8 Tangus instead of 4 in the beginning. At the start we mess up on our tri lane. We allow Tusk to just walk in and place a ward before the creep spawn. We should have bought fast and hurry to protect the area where he might place a ward, either at our pull camp or just to the right, being able to spot when we try to gank him. As it is, he bought boots first and is able to quickly place a ward without us seeing it, thus giving him valuable vision. I get the bounty rune with the help of my supports, but that means that no one is blocking the lane. I recommend standing between tier 1 and tier 2 to block the safe lane, because the creeps are quite fast and it is almost impossible to block them from the high ground tower where they spawn. I try to get to the creeps and block, but I just miss them. This results in us getting a horrible creep equilibrium way too close to Tusker's tier 1 tower, allowing him to safely leech experience. He does play very aggressively, and when he decides to try to harass our ancient apparition support in the jungle, I quickly get an orb of venom and manage to kill him. It was a big misplay for him to be so aggressive, as he could just stay in lane and leech experience, and even get a few last hits. At 7 minutes I have all the items I need to start ganking. Threads, Orb of Venom and I earn. I keep checking the map and see there might be an opening for Sniper. I haunt and immediately go to my Lucian. I want to get Dagger and Orb of Venom immediately on Sniper to slow him. I also start off with Intelligence Threads, then after haunt and Dagger I switch back to Agility when I start hitting Sniper. Shadow Demon's disruption on Sniper is problematic. I think we would have gotten him faster without it, and disruption just outside the tier 1 tower gives them more time to cheap in and help Sniper. But we do manage to get Sniper, but I give my life in the process since Pudge had time to cheap in and gets a hook on me. But it's still a 2 for 1 trade and I manage to get a lot of earned charges, which is essential to have early on as Spectre. At this point I am level 7, but our ancient apparition who has been in a tri lane is still only level 3. It is very important that he gets level 6 quickly, since his ulti will really help us in fights. That is why I hit jungle and let him stand solo safely to get experience. Unfortunately he only managed to get one level before Pudge ganks him, but the idea behind it is still good. At 16 minutes I am farming bottom lane. Pudge is hiding in the trees to my right, and AA standing at bot tower also unseen. We have a great lane ward, so we see Pudge and Juggernaut at their tier 1 walking to gank me. Now this is a great situation for us. We know that Sniper and Lion is mid, it is therefore a 2 vs 4 situation where they think I am solo here. I am the perfect bait in this situation, and as long as Jogger and Pudge doesn't catch me without my creeps, we should be able to kill them without me dying. But what happens is that AA shows himself in the lane, and Shadow Demon also TPs in vision of their creeps. Don't show yourself, no! Why are you all showing yourself? I don't know guys. This is very sloppy play, since AA could hide in the trees, and Shadow Demon could also TP into the trees. But fortunately for us, Juggernaut and Pudge decides to go for me, even though they have seen that I have two supports. This is a huge misplay from them, and we kill them both. I am somewhat whiny in voice chat in this situation, and that is something I should try to improve, since the team morale is quite important for achieving final victory. At 18 minutes I have Radiance, and together with Tress and Urn, that is quite good farm. I am usually able to get Radiance in under 20 minutes in most games. As soon as I see Pudge go for AA, I ultimate and get the kill. There may be some value in hiding the Radiance pickup and first showing it in a big teamfight, but that will delay your farm, so I usually don't bother hiding it. At 22 minutes they decide to push mid. 
Can we go defend the tower? Can we go defend it? Storm, storm, we need storm here. For me, it's great that they're pushing, since I got horned up. But the team fight goes terribly wrong, and it ends up being a complete team wipe for us, while they only lose that juggernaut. The fault is on me, since I asked for the team to defend it. Storm has said he wanted to farm his orchid, but I still called for a tier 1 defense. What ended up happening is that our three supports engaged them, and I didn't have a good opening for my ulti. After most of our supports are dead, I then use ulti and Storm then joins the fight. So it ends up being our three supports fighting, then Storm and me against four heroes. It would probably have been better to just let the tier 1 fall, and then engage when Storm had orchid. At 28 minutes, after farming and catching sniper with Storm, I got my heart. They are about to push tier 2, and I am farming the big neutral camp next to it. Now AA has pinged the hill above me, so I know that there is an enemy observer what there. But I have 2.6k HP, so I am okay with the fact that they might engage. The problem is that Pudge jumps me and ultis right away, so I don't get my ulti off. They quickly burst me down, but they are also scattered, so we managed to trade 3 heroes for 4, and our storm survives, giving him a lot of gold. If I had gotten ulti off before they engaged me, that would have been a much better fight for us. At 31 minutes, they decide to do Roshan. Here I make my biggest mistake of the game. Lion teaches me an important lesson here. Don't ulti too early. I ulti too early, and Lion just instantly dispelled two of my illusions, ensuring Sniper's safety. I didn't want to go to the Roche pit, since Sniper would then be able to freely hit me, so I instead jump on Pudge. But Pudge has a heart, so even though I managed to bring him down, my whole team gets killed in the process. Pudge even denied himself. I learned there that I had to wait for Lion to either use his spells or be silenced before using ulti, since he can just dispel my haunt. They managed to kill some of us and push at 35 minutes. They do get the Raxes, but we're able to wipe them afterwards, securing me an ultra kill and 3k extra gold, allowing me to get my mantle style. Don't die, don't die. Afterwards, at 38 minutes, we catch Sniper, and after we get him, we also manage to catch other heroes. This snowballs into a lot of kills for us, and in every engagement, we always have the upper hand. They should simply have stayed in base when we kill Sniper, and played as passively as possible. We managed to get a team wipe, and even getting Tusker on a dieback, allowing us to get a melee Rex. They are about to respawn though, so we get the Rex and quickly back off safely. Now pretty much the difference between them catching us and getting a Rax, and us catching them and getting a Rax, don't see yet, just walk back a bit. is that we didn't give their carrier an ultra kill because we stayed around too long. We had more discipline and back off after one melee Rax, giving them nothing back. At 41 minutes I pick up a Skadi. Now it is a bit risky that I play without buyback, but at almost 4k HP I feel quite safe in teamfights. They did manage to get an Aegis on Juggernaut, and they decide to push bottom. I have ulti on 20 seconds cooldown because I misclicked it when I was shopping before. But we managed to stall as long as possible and engage them with my horned up and we killed them all. We then decide to push mid at 44 minutes, and they then make a crucial mistake. With Jogger still being dead for 20 seconds, they decide to engage on us. This allows us to kill Tusk and Pudge while Jogger is still dead, and instead of getting Rags, we can end the game and get thrown. They might have had a chance if they just let their Rags die and defend top or throne, forcing a 5 on 5 fight close to their fountain, which is insanely hard for us against Sniper. I hope you found this video useful. Good day gentlemen and ladies.